Hey everybody, this is Jordan with PDQ.com. Uh, we're continuing our getting started with our products uh, guide. This is uh, using schedules within PDQ Deploy. Uh, this is the best way you have where you can just set it and forget it. Just make it so the software you want installs, you don't have to worry about it. So if we're gonna cover schedules, the best way, best way to cover that is come in and click on new schedule. We're hitting new territory here. This schedule we're gonna say seven zip, which seems like a, a weird one to make sure is uh, updated, but you know, I'm not, not gonna judge where seven zip is important to you, it's important to you. Uh, and first, tar uh, first uh, target is triggers, or I guess first window here is triggers. These are the options we have where you can customize how often it runs, when it runs. So you have here, you can have it uh, run once, an interval that is customizable based on a whole bunch of different parameters, and you can set specific days it can run. Uh, you can have daily, weekly, monthly, or heartbeat. Uh, heartbeat's a little bit different than it sounds. It's not when the computer checks in. It's if in PDQ inventory the machine shows it's off, offline, the next time it checks in as online, it will kick off the heartbeat schedule. So it's not, if you never reboot that machine, heartbeat's never gonna kick off. So it does have a lot of value for reboots or someone is off network, they come back on, all of a sudden it checks in, kick off the schedule, there's a lot of value in that. But it's not uh, a catch-all for everything, so you wanna make sure you have everything dialed in. In this case, we're going to do uh, weekly. We'll do every Friday. There we go. At 1 p.m., why not? And we're having to start. We're not sending an end date, but if you, after two years, don't need 7-zip, you can go ahead and check that box. It's going to stop the schedule at that time. All right, so the next one, targets. This is who is going to get the schedule when it goes to update. Uh, there's a lot of different options you can do based on OU and Active Directory, uh, target list, you get text file if you have just like a, you know, a TXT file or a CSV, or PDQ inventory, that's one I recommend. I mean, it's, I like our products. But this, if you build a lot of collections, you can customize based on the results of those collections. So the, instead of having a static list, whatever the current environment is, that's what the schedule is going to look at. So in this case, we're going to go inventory collection, see if we have a collection 47-zip already. Look at that, we do. So we're gonna go applications, utilities, seven zip, old. All right, so this means this schedule is only gonna run against machines that have an old version of seven zip. And if you're using inventory with this, which if we're pointing to inventory, I sure hope you are. Otherwise that's a wasted step. But as new versions of 7 have come out, we'll update that for you, including the variable. So as a new version comes out, it'll automatically move down to the proper collection that it needs, and every machine that needs it will then get it. All right, the next one, packages, simple enough. If we're going to say we're installing 7-zip, we better have 7-zip in there. Uh, last one is options, schedule enabled, self-explanatory. If you don't want to use it for a while, you need to put a break, come in and uncheck that, it'll work just fine. Uh, step two is credentials. I would recommend using PDQ inventory credentials. This way you know whatever is scanning in inventory, is what deploy will use for credentials. It kind of removes a lot of the guesswork. There's no single block, especially if you're using laps. This will allow you to use laps with your schedule. It makes it a little bit safe. Uh, copy mode, this is the same. There's the default they have set in the global setting, but you can do push or pull. Push means server's pushing it out. Pull means the computer's reaching out to the server and pulling it down to you. Push is default, but if you need to change it, you can. Uh, scanning, this is, once the schedule is done running, it will scan that machine so your inventory is up to date and will move the machines that are listed as old up to 7-zip uh, latest and you're good to go on that collection. Run as, we covered this in the steps earlier, this is just the different things you can run as, the, the default will be the deploy user. And then notifications, this is if you have email notifications set up, once the schedule runs, it will email you with a report of the machines that this installed on, whether it was successful or not. Uh, if I, I just prefer to use inventory, but if you like to get a CSV or you have uh, bosses that want CSV or some sort of file, this is the solution. This will send it right to them. This next checkbox I think is very important. Stop deploying the targets once they succeed. This means that if you have a static collection or for some reason it's in there, if it's successfully deployed to that machine already, it's not going to reattempt. It's just kind of a way to save some, save some time on that. And the added benefit of that is if, since 7-zip is a package that we update, if a new version of the 7-zip comes out, they'll automatically be cleared out of the target history, so it will include them once again into the schedule until it successfully installs. 
Uh, the next one is stop deploying if it fails. You can just set a number of times. Hey, if it hasn't worked three times, maybe just don't. <clears throat> and then the last one is stop deploying if it remains queued for targets for two hours. Uh, there's two hours of the default, you can change that. This is one where for some reason it's stuck, it hasn't completed. It's just kind of a way to say it didn't work out, so don't, don't, don't uh, keep on trying on that one. Next one is offline settings. Uh, by default, it's use the settings from the packages, but this is ping before deployment, or if it is offline, attempt to use the magic packet to wake it up. Uh, that If you have global settings, you don't need to change it. If this one needs to be customized, you can there. And the next one, this one is for the retry queue. I'd recommend where we have it, once it's successful, it won't uh, try it again on that one anyway. Paired with the heartbeat, because we could use the every week and the heartbeat. And that one, you probably don't need the retry queue, but if it's something you still want the retry queue, that's where you set that. And the target history, this is the list of every machine that it has successfully or unsuccessfully run on. If you have one where it was successful, but uh, you got uninstalled for some reason, you need to reinstall it, you can come in here. If you don't want to just do a one-off deployment, remove it from the, the target history here. And next time the schedule kicks off, it will install for you. And that's pretty much everything you need to know about schedules. With that, you can set it and forget it for any amount of software. It'll just, as the updates come in, Go through the process, update for you automatically, keep it up to date, and uh, if there's some problem, it will it will alert you. Uh, for PDQ.com, I'm Jordan.